I'm going to start with a karakia tamatanga, get us started. Kia tō nā manakitanga a te meo nā rō. Ki runga ki tēnā, ki tēnā o tātou, ki a mahi a te huia mā kihikihi, ki a tōi te kupu, tōi te mana, tōi te araha, tōi te reo Māori, ki tūturu kā whakamaua, ki a tēnā, tēnā, huie, tā, tā, ikie. Welcome everybody to the first forum of 2024 and hasn't it gone quickly already we're in March can you believe it and it's got a bit colder so we have um, quite a full um, agenda today and we also have I think almost a record amount of um, NGOs coming on I just want to welcome a couple of our HealthLink members um, Liz Manley is here today. She's now a local board member. Welcome, Liz. Um, and I think we have um, Samuel Cho and Kay Lindley and Zari Brazelnia. And I've missed anyone. I'm sorry, but I'll see you shortly, I'm sure. So um, first of all, we are recording this, just so you know. And we'll just have the presentations run in order of uh, the agenda. But also, sorry for people who don't know me, I'm Linda Cooper and I'm the chair of Waitakere Health Link. Apologies for that. So today we, we've been doing a bit of work at Health Link and we identified last year that one of our priorities is that we wanted to understand more the mental health, youth mental health issues in our community. And we know that over the last few years, issues with youth mental health have arisen, you know, increased, especially because of isolation during COVID, not going to school, and a whole lot of other issues that have affected our youth. And um, we appointed a youth rep last year. We changed our constitution, and um, our youth representative on health link is Samantha Santiana, and she's here today. And we, um, she's agreed to lead a piece of work, and she's going to talk about it. I mean, we're not massively resourced, but we felt that we needed to be able to get a sense in, in the West of what the issues are, maybe what networks there are, and do some sort of research. So I just want to tell you a bit about Samantha. Um, she's a wonderful young woman, and we're very lucky to have her on our board. So um, she's going to talk about the trends, challenges, and opportunities to improve support for Tamariki and Rangatahi living in, in the Health New Zealand Te or Waitamata region. And Samantha sits on the Waitakere Health Link's Executive Committee as the youth rep. She's a Swanson resident, but has grown up all over West Auckland, from Ranui to West Harbour and as far as Kumu. Having completed her Bachelor of Health Sciences and postgraduate diploma in public health at the University of Auckland, Samantha now works as a youth um, and I always forget AOD, alcohol and other drugs practitioner with Rangatahi aged between 11 and 18 years and youth justice residences. So I'm going to hand over to Samantha and she will talk to you about what we are keen to do. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you, Linda. Kia ora koutou, everyone. Um, my name is Samantha, as Linda said before, and uh yeah, at the moment, we're just really keen to put some feelers out for any other organizations who are working in the mental health and addiction space out west um, to support our Pranangatahi more. Um, I'm sure that many of you have seen that the Auditor General's report, Meeting the Mental Health Needs of Young New Zealanders, was released in the past month. Um, and there were some quite concerning findings, particularly around uh, high levels of mental health distress for young people aged between 12 to 24 years old in the past four weeks. About 21.2% of young people that they uh, surveyed reported that they had experienced high or very high levels of distress. So what we'd like to do is at this stage see if anyone in the community is currently working on any research with young people. Um, just so that we're not doubling up in efforts to identify what um, the problems may be um, and how we can address them at a frontline service level um, and I guess further along that track feeding into policy. Um, but also 
anything you've noticed in terms of recurrent um, trends that uh, young people are reporting that add to their um, mental distress and other mental health challenges um, out west. So um, I'd like to open up the floor for anyone if they feel comfortable sharing during this forum. Otherwise, uh, I'll drop my email address in the uh, chat and you can feel free to email me and we can either arrange um, a face-to-face -face or phone call later on if you'd like to speak a bit more privately about that. Um, but yeah, that's about it for me. Right, so if anyone just wants to raise their hand if they do want to talk about this, because as we said, we think there's a youth network, um, but we're not sure about mental health. So has anyone got any, I'm just, any hands up? So Elaine, you just need to unmute yourself, Elaine. Um, Samantha, I, I um, I'm really pleased to hear about your, your work and your investigation. I, I'm working with a program called Jade Speaks Up, um, and uh, we we do we're actually working with eight to twelve year olds, so just very slightly on the on the skirts of what um, you're looking at. But uh, one of the programs that we've developed is called You Good, You Good, which is looking at um, mental health issues, anxiety and stress, because we're hearing from the teachers. We we train teachers to deliver this program. Um, we're hearing from the teachers that anxiety and stress have really gone through the roofs in our classrooms. And so, so many young people are really struggling to learn or stay present with, um, you know, the, the whole thing of school as well, because of the um, degree of, um, you know, mental health and wellbeing issues that are there. And yet we're really struggling to um, get schools engaged with us. And uh, and we so we're offering this training for schools or uh, for the, for the teachers, but we're also um, for group facilitators and and um, people that are, are working as counsellors as well with groups. And so um, I'd love to be able to talk with you some more and also ask this network's help and and uh, really helping us get um, people that are are working with young people um, into learning a lot of the um, interactive ways of how do we address this without. Um, uh, you know, like kind of lecturing at kids, you know, how do we do this in an experiential embodied learning way? And so I would really be um, grateful to um, be able to to ground this in, in our community again, because it's where the community, um, you know, grew from for a start, even though we're working nationally now. Yeah. Thank you, Elaine. And you do, yes, you've done this sort of work for a very long time. Now, Trish had her hand up, Trish Fleming from Hospice. Kia ora everybody. Um, yesterday at a community hui in Helensville, I met a chap um, from an organisation called Safety Net. Has anybody heard of them? Yes. Um, yeah, what a wonderful thing they're doing to provide emergency housing in a safe, supported and very holistic model for young people aged between 16 and 24 in the Massey Henderson Ranui area. I'll send his details to you, Samantha, when I get those. Yeah, so if anybody wants to put their name in the chat in the chat and then Tracy can collect that or you can uh, if you email Tracy and she'll collate for Samantha. Um and then Samantha, are you do you want to do it that way or do you want to put your email in the sidebar? What would you like to do, Samantha? How I'll also put my email in the sidebar if anyone um nice. thinks of anything later on. But otherwise, um, I'll just liaise with Tracy. But it's great to hear that there are um, different uh, networks we can draw on and different projects already established in the community. Um, and I am particularly interested in what um, you were speaking about, Elaine, because a lot of the work that we do in um, the youth justice residences is around group facilitation. Um, so it would be good to see how we could transfer that uh, to that setting too. Thank you, Samantha. And I think really what we were trying to do is because our role is the voice of health in West Auckland, um, or that's what our purpose is, is to kind of help group people working in that area together so that if we need to communicate with whoever we need to communicate with to get what we need for our community, we can corral it all, you know, and, and you can work as a group to have some sort of communication, whatever you want to do, and we're very happy to facilitate that and 
get those messages out, get those requests out. Um, because at the moment we've been, all the locality planning is on hold. So we still don't have really any other ability or forum for a united voice we know of um, other than HealthLink who are connected to all of you. So um, we just think it's a really important issue and one where we know that when we get together in the West, we can get stuff happening. So no, I'll let you um, just round up if you want to, Samantha, um, and then we'll move on. So if there's anything more you wanted to say. Yeah, so just to recap, um, if you have noticed any particular trends or challenges working with young people, uh, whether they're in primary school, uh, intermediate or secondary school, or if they're now transitioning into young adulthood up to age 24, be really keen to hear from you. Um, and if you're, um, you or your organization or another organization that you're aware of would be interested in collaborating on a piece of research in the future, we're thinking about um, focus groups at this stage, but it would always change. And please do reach out. Thank you, Samantha. That's great. Thank you very much. All right. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go on to our presentations. And I just wonder, Samuel, are you here? Uh, He's having trouble with this. He might not be able to join. So I might have to pop in Samuel Cho at some point. He was last, but he had to go early. So if he gets in here, I might have to just slot him in at one point. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with um, Cancer Society under our long-term conditions. Have we got, um, actually, what we could do, if everybody who is on that list, on the long-term conditions, to electronically put their hand up, and then you will come to the top of the page, and I can very, very easily see you. So Jane Carrington, are you here? No. So what I'm going to do, if anyone comes in late, they just need to put themselves um, up there. Let me get, go out of my chat. Um, all right, then, have we got Jane, Jan Van Dyke? Jan Van Dyke? No? All right. What about um, Huma from CCS Disability? No. Nicola, then, we have. Oh, do we? Yeah. We did have Nicola. So you're next on the list, Nicola. So away you go. Hello, kia ora, everybody. Okay, so I am with Dementia Auckland, and I am the West Auckland Dementia Advisor. Um, we are a service that supports people living with dementia, all types of dementia, all ages, um, young onset through to older people. Um, and their whānau. Um, we deliver education to whānau, we have support groups we run, and we have socialisation groups as well. So um, go online, We've got a really good website, um, easy referral system, anyone can refer, we accept self-referrals as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nicola. So next, have we got Kath from Disability Connect? Don't see a hand up, but... Yes, we do. Oh, great. Lovely to see you, Kath. Hi, we're Disability Connect. We're an organisation that helps spread information and advice for people with disabilities, their families and professionals. We run support groups. And we also have um, set seminars that we can do on welfare, guardianship, and education issues. That's about it. <laughs> Thank you. And if anybody wants to put their um, contact deal details in the chat, you can. And what um, Tracy does at the end, she collects them all. And when she sends her follow-up, she sends all those. So thank you. So we have Jess from Epilepsy New Zealand. Welcome, Jess. Kia ora everyone, thank you for having me. It's my first um, meeting. I started in the role um, in November, but I've come from um, working at Waitakere Hospital for the last sort of 15 years or so. So I've definitely been in the West a long while. Um, so Epilepsy New Zealand is an 
national service, but I am the educator for the Waitamata area, um, but there's one of me in each of the DHBs. Um, we support uh, right from children, from, um, you know, from birth, all the way up through to adulthood, uh, people living with epilepsy or um, having seizures. And we support um, around education and their understanding of epilepsy, but also around day-to-day -day life. So whether that's um, supporting with um, employment um, and helping their, their employers understand epilepsy or whether it's uh, working with their teachers at school. Um, a big part of what we do is around education and advocacy. So um, going in and training teaching staff or workplace staff, like I mentioned. Um, we also have a online um, platform for like sort of an e-learning called Seizure Smart, which you can access through our website. So for a lot of workplaces, particularly, that's a good option. Um, and then we also focus on raising awareness in the community. And so our big day coming up is Purple Day, which you may have heard of, which is the 26th of March. And um, we're always keen for lots of support. We've got schools and things doing mufti days and bake sales, that sort of thing. I'll be at West City on the 27th of March with um, a few clients joining me. So uh, yeah, I'll pop it in the chat though for further information. Um, and you can refer to us just on our website or emailing me, but I'll put that in the chat. Thanks. Thank you very much, Jess. So Trish Fleming from Hospice, we're still planned. Kia ora tato. Um, we are your palliative care service for the west of the Waitamata from the um uh from Shelley Beach, north of Helensville, down to the Foe, Portage Road, Avondale, New Lynn border, and we care for anybody aged over 18 who has any non-curative illness. So hospice is just not about people who have cancer. It's just not about people who are old. Um, and we care for most of the people that um, come through our service, support end-of-life care in their domestic environment or their place of choice. That could be their aged residential care setting or their intellectual disabilities um, provider, etc. Our services are based on the Te Whare Tapa Whā model, so holistic care and so families can access a range of support services to see them through that time of caring for somebody on their illness journey during the time that they die and in the bereavement stage afterwards. Um, yeah, drop us a line or just check out our website, www.hwa.org.nz. Great to see you all. Thank you so much, Trish. Now, have we got Richard Blake from Independent Living Charitable Trust or anybody from there? No. So I'm going to go back to Huma. You've arrived. Huma from CCS Disability Action Northern Region. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Huma Yunus and I'm from CCS Disability Action Northern Region Children Family Whānau Team. So we have um, we have been supporting people with impairment, disabilities since 1935. We are a big organization. And um, so the office, the branch I'm working in is based in Royal Oak, Auckland. We have three departments within our organization. So we have early intervention uh, who work with children um, age five uh, years and below. And then I am from Children Family Fano team and we work with the children uh, from five till um, 19 years. And then we have youth and adult team and they work with uh, people um, 19 till, you know, whenever. And um, Within Children Family Whānau team, we have various contracts. We hold several contracts with Orangata Mariki. We have uh, IWS Intensive Wraparound. We have Afi Whānau Huya, which is uh, about um, supporting families if they have an open file with Orangata Mariki due to some reason. And then we have Children in Care Bed Night Service, which is um, administered through CCS Disability Action. So the contract, one of the main contract that I'm working on is called Supported Lifestyles Under 19. So under 19 means that we can work with the person we support until they reach the age of 19 years. And the whole support is around having the family and the person we support um, get the control and choice over their life 
and have access to the community support and services they need to have a better quality of life. And the focus is meeting the disability needs. So that is us. And uh, thank you so much, Linda. Is Linda frozen? Yeah, some, something's, exactly. gone off. yeah maybe, something's maybe. gone off. Is Tracy there still? Oh, here we are. Recording in progress. Sorry about it. Can we have a little glitch there? Right, so now um, thank you. <laughs> happening here it's your sound we can see you linda but we cannot hear you is there anything wrong yeah okay, no what now about we, now, now is we can that, hear you. great sorry yeah. about that people bit of a glitch that happens sometimes when you're sitting at the hospital apologies for that so thank you, um, Puma. Um, now, I just wondered, Samuel, um, from Tani, are you there? No. Okay. Right, well, we're going to move on to um, Lynn from Muscular Dystrophy. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Linda. I'm Lynn Williams from Muscular Dystrophy. I am the field worker for Muscular Dystrophy Northern, and my area covers pretty much from um, Pamuor right the way up to um, Kaikohi. We are a small not-for-profit organisation um, with around 800, maybe 850 members, um, and we cover up to <clears throat> excuse me, 60 different neuromuscular conditions. Um, we look after everyone from children right the way up to um, adults. Our service provides home-based visits, support for new diagnosis, referrals and working with other agencies like CCS Disability and Thai Quarter Trust. We offer advocacy and support. We liaise a lot with other services to get the best outcomes and help for our clients and members. Um, we are part of the Neuromuscular Registry um, and we work in conjunction with Auckland Hospital, um, facilitating social contracts, attending schools um, to raise awareness about a child's condition. Um, we have annual family camps. We do newsletters, emails, um, and we're just pretty much there if people have received a diagnosis and actually have never heard of the condition that they've got. That's me. Thank you, Lynn. Now, we, um, no one here from NeuroConnection Foundation, I don't think, so we'll go straight to Susan from Parkinson's. Kia ora. Um, so I'm the new Parkinson's nurse educator for West Auckland. Um, Parkinson's is the fastest growing neurological condition in the world, and we have over 1,500 clients in the Auckland area. Uh, so as a nurse, my role is to uh, connect with our clients who have Parkinson's uh, and all their carers uh, in their whānau and offer um, free education and support. And I'm also able to um, offer referrals because um, what we find is, is there's often a, a place where people will fall through a gap between the GP and the specialist and they're not being referred to um all the correct services that are going to support their well-being. So I follow the Tafari Tapafa model very, very closely. Um, and as I'm new in this role, I am look reaching out to make connections with anybody else in the community that can help me, that can support my amazing, wonderful, robust clients. So um, you may hear from me um, if you think you can help us and support us. 
um, that'd be great. I will put my details into the chat. Um, thanks very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, Susan, and welcome. So the last um, but not least um, organisation in this section is Stroke Foundation Pauline Mitchell. And I just want to say Pauline is also our new disability rep on HealthLink. So it's great to have her here. Um, welcome, Pauline. Kia ora. Tēnā koutou. Uh, Kei Stroke Foundation of Aotearoa Aho e Mahiana. I work for the Stroke Foundation of New Zealand. Greetings, everyone. The aim of the Stroke Foundation is to, um, to um, prevent strokes by informing the public um, and the community um, on how to prevent strokes. So today I'm going to talk to you about a new initiative that the Stroke Foundation has created, which is called He Tonga. Everyone, not just people who have had strokes, should be aware of stroke risk factors and make an effort to change their lifestyle if necessary to reduce the risk of stroke. High blood pressure is the leading cause of stroke. Hetonga helps you and your whanau maintain a healthier blood pressure and improve your health. It is a six-week program and it comes with weekly emails and video links directly to your inbox. You see Tama and his whanau on their journey and how to apply this to, our, to your own journey. Each week there's an ins inspirational kōrero from our champions, Maria and Sunny, who share inspiring words of advice. I'll enter the, um, the contact details into the chat box. It really is a good um, program. I'm doing it myself. Kia ora. Kia ora, Pauline. It's great. All right, so we'll move on to, oh, I'll just go back to um, the Asian Network Tani. I hear that um, maybe Samuel's having problems with sound. So, Samuel, if you can pop your um, details in the sidebar for people, a link to your website or an email, if um, because... I don't think we can hear you. All right, so we now go on to uh, mental health and social services. And our first, uh, if we can just, everybody in the mental health and social services list pop their virtual hands up, that would be great. So have we got Alicia Mark from A Supported Life here? Let's have a look. I don't think so. Isn't it great that this, list of participants is in alphabetical order and she's not here so well uh do we have summary from changing minds disability abuse prevention and response lee tempest no family action fiona or rashida at the moment Grief Centre, we have Katrina then. You're first up, Katrina, thank you. We do, thank you. Hello, kia ora everyone. Uh, can you hear me okay? I've just been having some camera issues, so perfect. Very Lovely. good. Thank you. Um, so I think many of you know the Grief Centre is a charitable trust. Uh, we were established in 2009 and we support all New Zealanders living through loss, including uh, death loss and bereavement, relationship loss, redundancy, um, illness and loss of faculty, uh, disability, pet loss, and many more forms of loss. And our kaupapa is to support people uh, regardless of financial circumstance. Uh, so what I wanted to talk about today though, is that we also do training and professional development for um, people who work in uh, the loss and grief area, community workers, and lots of other relevant organizations who deal with people living through loss. Uh, and we have our upcoming conference called Let's Talk About Grief 2024, um, which is a rich day of learning um, to encourage conversations around grief with the aim of improving our collective grief literacy and our understanding of how to support people through loss and grief. Uh, our keynote speaker is renowned grief resilience researcher, Dr. Lucy Hone. And we also have Australian thanatologist, it's a new word I learned, someone who, who works in the, in the loss and grief space, uh, Dr. Lauren Breen, 
uh, Cabrini Marcasiale and also the Mental Health Foundation are joining us. So uh, there's a mix of presentations and workshops and uh, we'll conclude with a panel discussion facilitated by our lovely patron, uh, Judy Bailey. So this is on Friday the 17th of May, uh, being held at the Novotel in Ellerslie. Uh, and it's really for anybody who works in, um, well, obviously counselling therapy, but aged care facilities, palliative care teams, uh, funeral homes, uh, social workers, school counsellors, uh, community organisations, nurses, medical professionals, um, anyone who, who sees loss and grief in their work. So um, all the details are on our website, griefcentre.org.nz slash conference, which I will put into the chat. Uh, but we would love you to join us on this day um, to, yeah, to talk about loss and grief and how we as professionals can uh, do more in that space and help and support New Zealanders living through loss. So thank you. Thank you. And I'm sure there's a lot of people on this call that would be interested in that um, great sounding conference. So I see we have Araha Hudson from Health West. Are you there, Araha? See you on. Not at the moment. All right, so we'll go to Lee Comport from LifeWise. Hello, Lee. Might need to... Lee, you might, are you, just get you to unmute there. If you... That's it. Sorry, I'm unmuted. Um, kia ora koutou katoa. Um, I'm Lee Comport from Likewise Family Services. Um, I'm a community social worker. Um, we have a variety of services available. We're based in New Lynn, um, but we service all of West Auckland. So um, we offer a variety of um, skills and practice um, social work um, to families and we do a variety of things but we initially do an assessment with the family figure out what it is that they that has brought them to us they will self-refer or they will be referred and we will work on their goals and plans and once that's completed then we sign off um, so yeah we have um, all kinds of uh, families that come to us for a variety of reasons. And um, yeah, that's us. We have um, several different teams that work with the Likewise Family Services. Some are working in a contract with Oranga Tamariki with the families who um, are either have, are at risk of having their children um, removed by Oranga Tamariki or those that are being returned from Oranga Tamariki transitioning home. So that's one contract which is called Manafano. and then we have other uh, community team that deals gen with generic family um, support and um, we have parenting programs and we have a contract with uh, the Ministry of Justice for um, Parenting Through Separation. So those are running every week for families in need of those. So yeah, well, we have a variety of things that we can offer families out west. That's us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lee. Now we have uh, Jonathan from Man Alive. I see your hand up. I'm still... Hello, everybody. So an are... invitation to present to you today. I'm presenting on my uh, manager's behalf. I'm here in the youth department at Man Alive. A lot of you probably know Man Alive. It's been a long established trust um, supporting men with living without violence, et cetera, um, and couples therapy. But here I'm in the youth department. So we are working with Tamariki from eight to 24 years of age. And we offer a variety of um, programs to tailored to support those those young people. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to give you an overview of what we offer. Um, and then if somebody comes into your, across your desk, so to speak, um, or uh, then you can see, put, match them up, which is the beauty of this meeting. We're connecting um, practitioners. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so essentially, uh, if there's anything to do with anger, we offer a program called Growing Men, which is uh, 10 to 12 weeks, specifically tailored to 
support young people with um, strategies around their anger management, and that's individual sessions. We also offer broader um, counselling for youth general counselling, so that's all other issues, so commonly depression, anxiety, being bullied, sexual abuse, drugs, um, alcohol, um, parent, parental separation, um, sexual identity. So that's a broader range of presenting issues that we um, support clients with. Um, and we also um, offer um, Boys Alive as one of our kind of flagship uh, groups that we offer. It's during the school term, eight weeks, uh, on every Wednesday from 4 to 6.30, and that's to do with um, anger management, but in a setting with up to 12 other boys. Um, so it's a fantastic program for young people because we do um, – day trips to Parakai, um, and we do an overnight camp as well. So that's a fantastic, fun, adventure-based counselling. So it's really, really a, in, um, effective um, in a positive way. So um, the other thing that the other counsellors do is Boys Alive in Schools, and that is a supportive programme getting our tamariki from intermediate into high school, that, that tough transition. So at the moment, we are in Waitakere College and Massey High School working with um, boys there. Um, that's that's those base, that's basically the programs and obviously um, it could be self-referred um, or we could um, we also work with Orama Tomariki, um, Your Choice, um, Health West I think and um, ACC um, as well. So uh, thank you for your time and um, obviously I'll put my managers and uh, link in the chat. So thanks everyone for your time. Thank you Jonathan. So next is Tracy from Te Ata. Welcome, Tracy. Kia ora, and I'm so sorry to um to be a bit late. I was particularly um frustrated because I heard that you were talking about mental health, and that's kind of us. Um, yeah. So I'm Tracy from Te Ata. Um, we've got a, a peer run um, mental health support uh, drop in a service at 52 Keeling Road in Henderson. We run um, a variety of well-being, recreation, expression, self-expression kind of programs. Um, just so you know, at the moment we've got um, dance therapy, art, slow cooking. Um, we have uh, we have a fair food collection today on um, Wednesday. Craft group, uh, pottery, uh, sorry, poetry, poetry, not pottery at the moment. Um, uh, karaoke, pool comp. So we've got all kinds of recreation and and um, yeah, well being kind of programs to to support um, people's mental well being. Um, we've also started doing some outreach. Um, uh, groups. So I'm I'm once a week I'm going into the uh, mental health inpatient unit to let people know that we're here. Um, so they've got a place to connect with people that have might have been through similar experiences when they're um you know are discharged from hospital. And um yeah um uh what else to say about theatre? Um yeah so we um we've got you know between. A couple of hundred active active members, like four hundred odd people on our on our um on our um in our um database as such at the moment. Um, we're just about to take on we've we've yeah had some changes in staff lately. Um, so we're just about to take on someone who's um done a lot of training in peer support and lived experience roles. So if you have anyone who's interested in moving into um mental health peer support or um or working in those um coming from a lived experience roles, um then um it'd be good to connect with you. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, I guess that's that's about it. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm just to clarify. Um, when I say peer run, all of the staff and the board that run Tiada have our own experience of recovering from mental health challenges. So um, we come from very much from that peer um peer to peer um support space. So, yep. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Tracy. And if you want um Samantha Santiana's details around the uh topic. The mental health topic earlier she's put it in the chat or if you're interested to be part of it just um email tracy as well so it'll it'll be at the beginning of the chat i think there'll be samantha's details for anyone else that missed it as well so now we're on to the community health section so if anyone will just pop their virtual hands up and i see we do have read from aotearoa africa foundation here yes yes welcome Thank you, Linda. You look very, you look very 
um like in a fog today i don't know whether your lens is a bit needs a oh, or oh, you're oh, just blurred yes i think my camera um is it better now <laughs> a little bit <laughs> never mind yeah we can see you a bit better now that's great all right well off you go thank you okay Kia ora koutou. Uh, my name is Red and I am representing Aotearoa Africa Foundation, AAF. Um, AAF is a grassroots organization that advocates for the African communities and migrant and ethnic communities as well through social services, health and well-being, and social advocacy. So our social services uh, revolves around um, dealing with poverty primarily and where we have a food support program every uh, Saturday, so like 2 p.m. To, to 5 p.m. And that has been really helpful here in the community. And actually we also just moved our new office into um, the Mount Albert Marrow School area. So 208 Richardson Road. And um, in terms of social service, we also have um, social uh, workers, social work practicum. So we do get students who come from Unitech to come and do their practicum with us of African background. So that's an area that we also need to increase to be able to help African community members um, to have the social workers who kind of like understand them in terms of the, the cultures as well. And because it's quite um, scarce, it's quite rare as well uh, some social worker with to get within that uh, whole area and so um in terms of social worker we also do have um youth youth programs so our youth programs are uh, as, as part of the youth development so that's every thursday 5 30 p.m here to enable to um help young people find a safe space where they can grow and also learn and to um, about leadership. And in terms of health and well-being, um, we are also looking at community research on sexual reproductive health among the African communities and also down uh, on infertility. And um, from that also in addition, we're looking at also health disparity. So that's a little bit about that the health aspect as well. We have a lot of people who have um, mental health as well, but cannot find the culturally appropriate support um, in the community. So that's an area that we need to work on to kind of like um, uh, improve and help um, the community with, with, with that service. Also, in addition to that, so our social advocacy is about um, social housing advocacy, uh, immigration, and with social housing advocacy, it's been increasingly successful about 80% success rate um, about social housing. And that's another area where there's a lot of demand as well. We have people. Um... Well, thanks, Red. We've had to cut you off because you had way over. <laughs> but thank you. Um, we just usually limit to a minute and a half, but we we're being a bit kind. But I think Tracy's like, come on. We've got to keep moving. Um, thank you, Red. Um, now, uh, next we've got Leomi Wade from Citizens Advice Bureau. Then after that, I'm going to slot in Araha Hudson from um, Health West from the earlier session. Thank you. Welcome, Leomi. Hi, everybody. Kia ora. Um, so I'm the manager at Citizens Advice Bureau in Glen Eden. There are five CABs in West Auckland. Uh, we have Henderson, Massey, uh, Avondale, New Lynn, and us. Um, we're a drop-in service. You can walk in, you can phone us up. We have a, we have free phone from mobile numbers included, um, which will take you to any of the 2,000-odd trained volunteers around the country. Um, and we can help, you know, if you if someone comes across your desk with complex needs, you can help them in a certain way, but you're not sure how to help them in other ways, um, then, you know, give us a call. We'd love to help you help them. Um, we are also, we're sort of, we have sort of two aspects of the social policy, which is at the highest level, but there's also our grassroots level. So we help people on the ground. Everything we do, we write up for quality control, but also our data is then mined by National, who are then going to take that and um, try and 
sort of see where there are areas where we have particular community needs. And we're just at the moment um, have just done uh, Maori um, uh, interaction and where the shortfalls are. Um, so I will be looking to commun communicate with anybody who have particular um, Maori uh, connections. Um, please email me or our team. Uh, we'd love to hear from you so that we can start a, a career around um, our findings and make sure that you can use them to help support any of your, um, you know, stories to make sure that the government listens to what you say as well. And uh, finally, uh, you have all got wonderful organisations and part of our uh, cabinet has community directory please, please, please get in contact with our information officer. She is in charge of our local community directory. If you're not in it, we cannot refer people to you. So please, 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 I will put um, my email and I will put uh, Kerry's email, info to info.waitakari at cab.org.nz. Uh, if you're not in there, our national team cannot send people to you and that would be a Thank you very much. Thank you, Leomi. So, and actually it might be good, um, we do have the hospital directory, uh, community directory, so there's a, a place to get a lot of information. So next I'm going to ask Araha uh, Hudson to come on for Health West. Yeah, um, kia ora everyone, and sorry I missed my slot. I had to take a phone call, so I'm really sorry about no. that. I um, just want to acknowledge all the providers that I can see on the screen and acknowledge you for your tremendous mahi in the community. Um, so thank you, Linda, and I can see Kay there and Elaine and, and, and others that I haven't seen for a while. I haven't been on this forum. And um, so thanks, um, Tracy, there too. Thank you. Um, sticking to primary mental health, um, and, you know, thank you. I saw also acknowledge me live. Um, we provide a program that provides access to rangatahi friendly counsellors, psychologists, youth workers, mentors, mentors and social workers um, living with um, mild to moderate uh, mental health across Waitakere, North Shore and to an extent Rodney. Um, we also have two youth clinics that provide free health services for um, a range to support young people across complex needs, physical health, sexual health. Um, what we are finding is probably 50% of our rangatahi that are coming through our clinics are also seeking help in terms of mental health. And um, increasingly, we are working to try and connect our other services around housing, food, and other social needs to support people with mental health. Um, one last little thing, I don't think I'm at 90 seconds or I might nearly be, we will be launching a new service soon. Um, it's free for um, mama, hapu mama um, and children. It'll be a multidisciplinary team where um, health and social needs can be met for children up to five. Kia ora. Kia ora, aroha. And you might be, um, might have missed earlier, but we're just trying to pull together kind of a network of youth mental health organisations. So um, Yes, I did hear that. Great, good. So I'm sure um, Samantha will be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So next we go back to Jeanette uh, Kohenitu, Health and Disability Advocacy Service. Kia ora, Jeanette. Uh, kia ora, koutou katoa, ngā mahi mahana. I haven't been in one of these forums for a very long time. Um, oh, so, my. <laughs> um, so the service that we provide is, the, um, is where people are experiencing or have experienced um, situations with health or disability services. So they have the right uh, to address those concerns directly with the health, um, the health provider or disability provider. My role in that is to provide them the options that are available to them and um, we can assist them through that process or they can do that themselves. All I do is to provide them the options to do that. We've changed our... Um, our promotion material um, prior to COVID and now it's up and running. So you can go into our website. So we have our own website where you can do, where you can chat um, with a person um, around the concerns that you have. We're also on Facebook. So our, um, so our name is, um, can be seen right across the medium 
um, across those mediums. Um, and as for many of you know, we are a free uh, and a confidential service to anybody who wishes to address their concerns to the health and disability services. And I work in the West Auckland area. So kia ora, it's lovely to see everybody and to know that people are still, you know, working in this area. Um, so hopefully I can catch up with you. Kia ora, Tracy. Nice to see you. You're working at Tiata. And Tracy McIntyre, great to see you and you, Linda. So it's really great. Thank you. That's see me. You. Yeah. Kia ora, <laughs> Jeanette. All right. So um, now Elaine from Jade Speaks Up. Welcome, Elaine. Thank you. I uh, it's so heartening to um to see the the huge range of uh, agencies that are holding Waitakere's well being in its heart, and it feels really special to be sitting back in this this forum as well. Yeah. So the Jade Speaks Up Educational Trust is particularly aware of the need for prevention work by resourcing young people to get some skills and tools to be able to look after themselves around mental distress. Um, um, and well-being issues and particularly we've got two areas of focus one is of um, family harm uh, when we know that there are 500 call outs that the police make every day in New Zealand to incidences of family harm where children are present as well well you know that comes up to 182,000 children uh, or incidences um, there and we know that in the sector probably no more than 10 to 20 percent of the actual um, issues of, of family harm ever get reported to anyone officially and so it's a huge um, scourge in our community that children are growing up feeling unsafe nervous anxious um, you know really um, it impacts on their their social learning their academic learning their um, their own well-being. And uh, in the research that we did, we, we worked with over 3,000 children. We found out that 46% uh, of children identified as being at risk of, of um, mental distress. 46%, and that was from high decile schools to low decile schools. So we, we know that children are really in a, a very vulnerable place at the moment because of the adults that are, are around them. So we train teachers, we train facilitators, we train social workers in, in facilitation skills on how to deliver programs. One of them is about uh, mental well-being, uh, wellness, and the other is about family harm uh, prevention for children. And and, uh, and a lot of you will have been aware of our, our Jade Speaks Up movie that we, we created um, in 2014 um, with a lot of help from our community as well. So uh, please help us. Please help us get um, some schools involved or let us know if you think that we can work with your um, facilitators or um, group group people um, in developing some of the, the skills or refining some of the skills that they have to be able to really interact with students, um, with young people, to help them develop those strategies for themselves. And I'll, I'll put our email or our website address in the chat, but... Uh, to let you know that we're running a an, an online training for you good you good which is looking at mental health um uh, stress and anxiety um and that's going to be in three afternoon sessions starting on the uh, 26th of march from um, 1 30 to 3 30 uh and so that there'll be three in each one in each week that um people can join in online and uh, and that so you know please look at it because i think that there's some fantastic resources that are there so thank you for the chance to elaine. talk with you all yeah right thank you elaine so we next have catherine lawler from mclaren park henderson south community trust hello catherine Oh, kia ora, Linda. Nice to see you here. Um, like many, I haven't joined for a while. Um, and I, I don't know if this is exactly the space we're meant to be in, but um, you said community. So I'm Catherine um, from MPHS Community Trust. That stands for McLaren Park, Henderson South. We're based right in the heart of Henderson South. Um, our main base is there at Hub West. Um, and really, we I'm here to just hear this amazing work that's happening because what happens at our hub is community members just walk in the door to, to engage with us on a range of free programs that we run from right through to preschool, playgroups, through to our after-school youth drop-in program. 
absolutely lots of mums, dads, caregivers, grandparents. Um, we run a joy club for just older youth, a whole lot of social connection just to keep the community connected. And then dropping in every week, we get to know them and then we understand their needs and we can refer them out to all these various services. Um, we're also a community hub that run a lot of health promotion and connection. So I've got a great lot of names here today and we'll be reaching out to you or you can always ring us at Hub West or reach out to our team because um, we'd love you to use our community centre to do pop-ups to bring the community in. And we've got a significant following on social media and locally at all the events we run. Everything we run through MPHS is free, so we get a big following. So it's a great way to tap into those communities. So that's who we are. I'm just here to hear. Um, we, we find our job in the, as running a community hub and a youth service and youth program is to find out what's happening so that we can be the connector, the navigator between all these services. Um, and just briefly, the other hat I wear, because I see Lee Tempest isn't here, but she's an amazing person. I'm on the board of FADSCAN, Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder, which is a national organization. Many of you may have heard of it, but there's great resources on that website, Fetal FASDCAN, Care and Action Network. Uh, we train teachers, social workers, and direct support for parents, whānau, caregivers, raising children affected by fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. And many of you will know that because many of those youth are the ones that you've just been talking about. It's an unrecognised disability in this country, but one that's looming large, and our youth justice facilities are full of it. So I'm part of an organisation where we're parents like ourselves are trying to do something about that as a community. So there's two great resources I want to share, and it was just wonderful to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. It's great that you popped that um, fetal alcohol syndrome uh, co-papa in there. So I can't see Ada Stoneman here, but is anybody here from Maternity Services Consumer Council? Nope. All right. So Jeanette Third from Presbyterian Support Northern. Welcome, Jeanette. Kia ora, um, I'm Jeanette Third and I work for Presbyterian Support Northern. I work in the Enliven team. Presbyterian Support's got many arms of social services, very similar to what we've already heard. We've got Family Works, Family Start, um, social workers in schools and budgeting services, but Enliven is um, the health and disability arm and uh, we have home care workers that go into people's home and help them with things like personal care and household management. But I work with the individualised funding team. It's for people with disabilities who develop a disability under 65. So our youngest client's been five weeks old um, and we have a few in every, every range in between. So this is for uh, allocation of support for personal care, household management and now respite care. And it allows a lot of freedom and flexibility to um, get the kind of services they want. Um, and you can now employ family members to provide that support. Um, and with respite care, the flexibility is amazing and it gives them great opportunities to uh, for community connections and great opportunities to, as long as the main carer and the, and the person with the disability is getting a break. It's kind of um, just about everything goes now. We're really happy to talk to people. I'll talk to groups to make sure people understand it's available. I'm always surprised that there is still people that don't know there is this kind of support available. So really happy to chat to groups. Many of our clients also have similar other social issues. So we too try and help to connect them to other places that can give them help with housing and other support so nice to meet you all and um yeah i think we'll be attending this meeting from now on i hope thank you jeanette it's great to hear about that so um i i think the only person left on this list that's here now is um sally johnson from st john hatehone welcome sally Got to unmute you, Sally. Oh, you there, Sally? Have you turned? You've left by mistake. Oh no, no. Okay, I've had two on mute. So there you go. Um, oh, hopefully you can hear me now. There were two places I was yes, muted. Yeah. Thank safety, you. Safety. Hi, everybody. For those that don't know me, my name is Sally Johnson, and I am the healthcare relationship manager 
for St John in the Medical Alarm Division. And so some of you all know, and some of you will be new, uh, in, particularly in the NGO sector. So just reach out to me at any time. I cover the whole of Northland and half of Auckland, so the northwest and part of central Auckland. And I provide education and information and support for health professionals to educate them about uh, services. And primarily that's the medical alarm services, but we do touch a little bit on the other services that are around. So if you want to know any more, if you have teams of support workers or you're a health professional um, and you see people that would benefit from a medical alarm, please reach out and let me know. I'll pop my details in the, uh, in the chat. Um, and yeah, we can arrange a session either for a group. I do hospitals, NGOs, one-on-one, -on -one, whatever. Okay, lovely to see you. Thank you. Thank you, I'm Sally. I'm that's... myself once now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, so we've had Robin from Real World Living has just arrived. So Robin, if you want to take your slot. I could, that's fine. So sorry. I've just been in another meeting. Um, so I work for Real World Living. Um, we're a disability service based in Papakura and Penrose, but we have a uh, transition school transition service that works all the way across Auckland. Um, my role itself is community engagement. So I work all across Auckland, um, gathering information, sharing information with disability and non-disability services, um, and also working alongside families at the moment as well. Um, I will put the information in the chat. I am going to start driving in a second, but I will have you all here to listen to. Thank you so much um, for letting me speak right now. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Okay. So um, we also have um, Amy Adams here from the Mobile Physio. Amy, are you... Um, yeah? No. Is it Amy Adams? Yeah. She, put, she put a thing, a, um, a whole thing on the um chat. Okay, she might thank you. Yeah. I saw that she may not have wanted to stay to do that. That's all right. Okay. So um Kay, you had your hand up. Was there a reason? Hey Lindley. Yes. Am I unmuted? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, just want to say there's a lot of good things on here that I would like to put into the Greater Glen Eden newsletter, which goes out all over um, Glen Eden. And there's so many good programs. Oh, I'm really interested in your mama program. So um, if you send me something ready to go in, um, in JP, hopefully, that I can just put in um, on the 20th of the month, ready to go up the month after. So if you send it to me by the 20th of March, I can put it in the April newsletter. But we get a lot of feedback, a lot of people joining these things or, or going online to these programs. Um, and I've heard some things here today that I haven't heard before. And I would really like to get those into the newsletter. Thank you. Can you put your email into the uh, Yes, um, I will. Message? Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. All right, everyone. So where we are now is um, to some general updates. Um, Paula Seymour, the General Manager of Child, Women and Family Division and Site Manager for Waitakere Hospital, who is a good friend and ex-officio on Waitakere Health Link, couldn't be here, but she's um, given me an update because, you know, as you know, things are still very up in the air. We don't really know what's happening localities are still up in the air there's a lot that we don't know um even from amalgamation and now with changes um but the great thing is she is happy to share this information with our community so i'll just read it and hopefully make it sound interesting um so first um great news the enabling works for our new icu and medical wards have begun because we know that without to um, have medical wards, you have to have an ICU. So that is fantastic. You'll see on site that this has started at the back of the hospital and some car parks have been removed and the road diverted. Temporary car parks have been established in two locations across the site to replace the car parks that have been removed. Over the summer, we had six four bedded rooms across the hospital sequentially out of action. Three of these rooms to, were to support the enabling works for Manaki Hohonu which is the name of the ICU. 
where temporary fire exits had, had to be put in place. We used this opportunity to refresh and upgrade the rooms, and this is due to be completed late 2026. So if you'd wondered what was going on on site, that's that. Work is ongoing in birthing suites to upgrade them. And you will notice a continuation of the exterior painting at the front of the hospital, which will be completed by probably this week. Um, and at what she says, we've noticed a continued pressure on our emergency department and hospital throughout summer. Your help is essential to support people to seek treatment early and use community support so they don't end up in ED unless it's, you know, is an emergency. So that's that one. Now, um, so now we have, do we have Ruth Morse? We have a new um, interim chief executive for the Well Foundation. And we haven't seen her, but just to let you know, um, Tim uh, resigned from the Well Foundation. And the Well Foundation is the foundation that raises the extra funds required to provide facilities that aren't fully funded for both Waitakere and North Shore Hospitals. So Ruth Morse is now the interim chief executive. Also, um, you'll note, uh, I think it went out with the newsletter, but there is now at the moment a Royal Commission of Inquiry into COVID-19, and the feedback closes on the 24th of March. And I did have a little, here it is. I'll just read out the first, um, it says the Royal Commission of Inquiry into COVID-19, lessons learned was established by the New Zealand government in December 2022 to investigate Aotearoa New Zealand's COVID-19 experience so that the country can be more prepared for any future pandemic. So public submissions are open, and I think uh, Tracy's going to send that link out to you. So if you have experiences you want to share to help shape how we respond to future pandemics, there's an opportunity. Um and we do, uh, our community support brochure, we do have Erica Fairbank online. Erica, did you want to just talk to that update? Yes, I would like to. I uh, Somehow you can't see me email. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> Chair is very low. Um, yes, I've had just a printout from the new community leaflet. So we've updated all of them with... Um, uh, NGOs that wanted to be in there as well, and I'm just in the minute of uh, distributing the, the hard copies, and I'll give a couple to Tracy as well. So that that's all done. Came back from the printer and goes well. So if more NGOs want to be in there, that will be overly that we can we can do that. But a harder copy will be done again in a couple of months' time. Thank, Thank you, you, Erica. And I'm wondering, Leomi from C. Citizens Advice Bureau was looking to update theirs, so maybe with the link in the um, in the sidebar, Leomi, you could possibly quite go straight there because um, Erica's done quite a lot of work over the last year to gather many, many organisations into that um, community directory, so that might help you, um, Leomi, and thank you, Erica, for all the work that you've done there. That's thank a big you. piece of work. Thank you. And the last update I had was um, just from Lance Norman, who was working on the localities, that they're all on hold pending direction from the Minister of Health, Shane Retty, but they hadn't gone very far anyway. So we just don't know what will be happening. We do hear that more devolution to community. And if that's the case, that would be great. Um, but we're all still waiting to hear. So gosh, we, we finished up quite early, um, but it's been a great um, contribution by everybody. I wanna thank all of you, um, you know, for taking your time to join because this is one of the few forums, I think, you know, if we've got West Auckland together, which get together, but, you know, we don't have many forums like we used to in old Waitakere days. And it, so it's great to be able to, all of us to get together, support one another and share information. So I'm just going to um, say a wee uh, karakia whakamutunga uh, to finish up and wish you all a great day and we'll see you next time. Kia whakaere te tapu, kia wātia e te ara, kia tūriki whakataha e, kia tūriki whakataha e, haumie, huie, tāhiki e.
Matewa, everybody. Good day, everybody. Kakite. Kakite. Kira. Thank you. Kira. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Fantastic.